Today, I'm going to make you an offer. As you will see on the tables in front of you, I've gifted you a couple of goodies. These are your wheels, your popcorn, and your uh, M&Ms, those are for later. These items represent what I believe to be three of four growth drivers for regional, rural, and remote Australia. In the last 12 months, we've witnessed a continuation of growth in domestic travel. The number of Aussies traveling for business has increased. Interstate overnight trips have increased. The caravan and camping sector is booming. Holiday expenditure has increased. And all the while, the number of Australians holidaying overseas has decreased. During the last year, we've seen the value of the dollar drop and we've experienced strong growth in the international sector. With the industry contributing 107 billion in expenditure and 53.7 billion to the investment pipeline, there is no doubt that tourism is a key pillar of Australia's economic prosperity. Along with increased visitor arrivals and increased spend, increased regional dispersal from major gateways such as Sydney, Melbourne and Brisbane into dispersed regions is key to the growth and development of tourism and the visitor economy. As shown here, as shown here, while regional New South Wales boasts the lion's share of state visitors, Sydney has by far the largest share of visitor nights and spend. Whether we're talking about increasing regional Queensland's share of international visitor nights spent in Brisbane or regional Victoria collecting a larger portion of the $12 million spent in Melbourne last year, we can strengthen our local economies by increasing regions market share. Let's take a minute to address the factors which determine whether or not a visitor is likely to disperse. These include, number one is their mode of travel. Two is travel constraints. Three, who they're traveling with. Four, whether or not they've got friends and relatives in region. And number five, the number of activities they're planning to engage in. Keeping in mind um, that the more multi-destination trips or stopovers, the more regional dispersal. Meet the Camerons. This happy little family lives in the Channon in Northern New South Wales. As an older family with no dependent children, these days Alan and Angela enjoy taking short breaks in regional New South Wales. I'm sure they would love to visit their eldest daughter who has relocated to Wagga Wagga. However, like 20% of people, they rate travel to and within regional New South Wales by train, coach or air as hard or very hard. In reality, if Alan and Angela were to travel interstate, they would need to either fly from Lismore to Sydney to Wagga Wagga at a cost of approximately $670 per person return, or drive from the Channon to Wagga Wagga covering a distance of about 1,200 kilometres, consuming no less than 13 hours each way, and at least $200 in fuel to do the round trip. Remembering back to what Renata said on Monday, as consumers, we would prefer to invest in quality experiences as opposed to transport and associated expenses. This brings me to the first of four growth drivers and one of the major dispersal barriers facing uh, visitors who are looking to come to regional, rural or remote Australia. As our friends from Toowoomba, Newcastle and Darwin know, regional airport infrastructure is a long-term investment, which improves services for residents and has the greatest capacity to increase visitor numbers to regional Australia. Whether it comes to transport, when it comes to transport, many regional destinations rely on good air transport access, but unfortunately without transport on the ground, in many cases, the likelihood of visitors dispersing is slim. Here lies the short-term challenge for us. It's the integration of two or more modes of transport uh, by way of packaging and partnership marketing. I'll touch on packaging in further detail shortly. With regards to proven methods of increasing dispersal, I will now draw your attention to the importance of entry routes and gateway cities, which are crucial for regional tourism development and tourism operators. 
As we experienced on our field trips uh, on Monday, our operators and friendly VRC staff are key to, to disseminating travel information and dispersing tourists to regional destinations beyond the typical entry routes. <coughs> uh, which brings significant economic benefits to local businesses. While it's not as apparent uh, for domestic visitors, we've also witnessed the gateway city effect where regional destinations such as McLaren Vale act as the gateway of regional trips. With self drive short breaks becoming increasingly popular, uh, dispersal patterns imply that the cluster of tourism products experiences and transportation facilities provided at gateway cities play a crucial role in tourism marketing and the dispersal of tourists to regional Australia. Through the implementation of strategies, policies and procedures that align at all levels of government and industry, we will continue to improve access to and around regions and encourage the greatest incidence of regional dispersal. With all stakeholders and sectors crucial to tourism becoming a super sector come 2033, it is important that we band together and grow physical capacity through the development of quality tourism products and experiences. For regional New South Wales, uh, our regions are typically three to five years into the destination management planning process. Uh, as many of us review our DMPs or DAPs, if you're in SA, I urge you to consider how inter, intra and global visitor dispersal impacts your destination now and into the future. <coughs> to make sure we are positioning ourselves competitively, we need to stay attuned to the changing consumer values and lifestyles which affect the types of tourism experiences people are looking for. In recent years, we have seen a growing interest in more personal experiences, the money can't buy experiences that allow us to learn, discover and reconnect. I think this is where our destinations can really excel. Whether it's great food and wine, Indigenous tourism experiences or our world-class natural assets, visitors are looking for meaningful experiences that create a sense of place. The trend has seen the evolution of a new tourist who searches for an authentic experience and good value proposition. We talked earlier about packaging. Our destinations do not exist in isolation. Often we are only part of the story. Increasingly, consumers are looking for bundled products and experiences that might include activities, events, accommodation, transport, special offers, uh, or bite-sized itineraries. These itineraries show or should show our visitors what is possible and provide them with the advice and direction they need to plan their stay. They should celebrate our signature experiences, whether it's unearthing dinosaurs and fossils uh, in outback Queensland, going on a self-drive agri tour in the Riverina or on a walking tour in Tassie. We need to, to develop itineraries that are based around a theme or an activity Indeed, some states are doing these things well, but others are not. In order to compete, we need to offer a commissionable product and work collaboratively to develop sound visitor experiences, market them effectively, and increase the average length of stay, especially uh, through shoulder periods. Now, as passionate as I am about regional tourism, I love my events. Like many Aussies, I seek out quality events that offer the opportunity to have a unique experience or to connect with friends and family. In fact, one third of us are willing to travel overnight for a major event. In New South Wales, recognition of the opportunity presented by event tourism is demonstrated by the allocation of significant funding to secure major events and to market flagship events. Events which reflect the values, community passion, products of the region, giving them a competitive edge over other destinations. I ask you, if your destination can offer the necessary infrastructure and facilities, what are you doing now to attract and secure major events, and in particular, high yielding business events into the future? For mine, in order to make our destinations more competitive, we need to continue to renew and revitalise our regions and improve visitor experiences through the development 
of existing and new tourism assets. Research suggests that apart from visitors to Sydney having no time or that they were in Sydney for a specific reason, the main barrier to regional dispersal in New South Wales is a lack of awareness. It is our job to make sure that regional Australia comes to mind when visitors are planning their next getaway. We're going to achieve this by. A, taking this a strategic approach to destination marketing that includes a full range of activities that are focused on content and the consumer. Something I aspire to achieve in the next quarter for our client, Blue and Shire Council, is to work with our operators, neighbouring LGAs, RTOs and STO to bring a, a team of influencers to the Riverina, uh, increasing de destination awareness for our region. B, in region we are notorious for working in isolation, which has led to a fragmented and disjointed marketing approach. We need to work together in partnership and engage in partnership marketing activity to grow and develop regions. C, we are also going to work on our dom domestic dispersal strategies, because you're all going to create one of those. An emphasis on building awareness of regional attractions and the development of packages, which enhance and add value to the visitor experience. Furthermore, like the Florio, we are going to help build awareness of our destinations through destination branding, which we talked about in great detail yesterday. Now, I think we can all appreciate how much market research, technology and changing consumer trends have impacted on the way we market our product, experience or destination. For regions, it is important that we demonstrate a compelling value proposition by capitalising on emerging trends. These days, people are looking for holidays that are simple and easy to book. They meet, that meet a range of needs, whether they're educational, social or motivational, and offer a consistently high level of service. More specifically, we know that visitors tend to establish a general itinerary prior to their arrival. So it is important that we influence dispersal during the planning and booking stages. We also know that many regions, uh, regional <coughs> stays are often driven, driven by visiting friends and relatives. Does your current strategies capitalise on this market? We know that older visitors and those staying more than seven nights are more likely to disperse. We can anticipate their need for uh, free Wi-Fi hotspots and selfie spots, and that visitors are searching on their mobile device for things to do whilst in regions. So mobile coverage is on popular touring routes is particularly important. <coughs> In order to increase domestic visitor dispersal and repeat visitation, which I believe is the key to activating many of our regions, we need to have a thorough understanding of what markets, uh, what our market is and what they are looking for. Over the next 12 months, I intend to work with Car Carolyn and Bron of My Travel Research to gain a better appreciation of just that, so I can contribute to the 2020 target of double doubling overnight visitation and expenditure. Now, most of you would have noticed a little something else on your desk as well. These funny little stick people um, represent partnerships and the theme of the day. They're the final piece of the puzzle. Central to our success in growing and developing the visitor economy is our ability to foster strong partnerships and to recognise how and where we can work together to add value to the visitor experience. Earlier this morning, I made you an offer. This offer extends now to each of you to make the most of the final day of convention and to come together with those around you to discuss potential solutions and new mutually beneficial partnerships, remembering commercial viability is key. Finally, in a segue to the next session, appropriately titled Partnerships, I will leave you with a subtle reminder that nature-based domestic and international tourism in Australia continues to grow and that in order for our regions to really capture this market and engage with our com communities, we need to connect with national parks or connect better uh, to ensure we invite them to the table now and into the future. In recognition of the importance of tourism to regional growth, uh, and economic prosperity, promoting greater dispersal of tourists and spend remains an important item on my agenda, as it should yours. Tourism is a vibrant and optimistic industry. We need to match this optimism and harness it for growth. 
let's take a united approach to domestic regional dispersal and together reposition rural, regional and remote Australia. Now is our time. Thanks for yours. So there's no wine today because the chocolate's on the table. Thank you so much for uh, fulfilling the ultimate need of, uh, of sugar. Give her a great big round of applause. What I'll do is uh, I'll actually...